Hey, welcome. We're moving into Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Let's read those. The burden of the word of the Lord against the land of Hadrach and Damascus, its resting place. For the eyes of men and all the tribes of Israel are on the Lord. Also against Hamath, which borders on it, and against Tyre and Sidon, though they are very wise. Many times we see this uh, word burden applied to the words given by the prophets. Do you think it was easy for them to give their messages? Because, you know, every time God gives a message, it seems like it sort of interrupts human activity. What? You mean you've got something you want me to do differently? When the prophet opens his mouth, people become very unhappy. And I appreciate Zechariah, Zechariah, who is doing what God is showing him he needs to do. He's calling him to be a servant, a prophet, and he's doing it. But it's probably not too well appreciated. Not too many gift cards in the mail for Zechariah. There is a word against Tyre and Sidon. And it's interesting, this comment here near the end, that they are very wise, though they are very wise. And I think that's really how they regarded themselves. We are wise. Look at our mighty fortress fortifications. Look at our mighty seaway out into the ocean for the merchant ships to dock there. And they're against God's truth. They're against God's religion. They're kind of into this totally secular uh, materialist, materialist, they're into the, the wealth, the silver and the gold and the wealth. And so they, they kind of get this elevated feeling about themselves. They think that they are pretty wise. God says, I've got a burden. I've got something to tell you people you need to know. And you've got some, a place where you need to tune up and get back into some reality. Your head's getting kind of big. You need to get back into reality. Let me send my servant Zachariah. And he has a message for them. And right here, I want to put the spotlight on something that was in parenthesis there in the English translation. But I think it was the most interesting piece in this passage. The eyes of men and of God's people, you know, are on the Lord. The eyes of men. I mean, we understand Israel, that, that they're looking to God. He's their God. They're his people. The covenant's connected. Uh, they're looking to him to be their deliverer. But it's interesting, the eyes of men, the eyes of men, people in Tyre and Sidon, they want to hear what's, well, what, what, there's an oracle against us? That's, that's important news. Uh, the people of Philistia are going to come up, there's going to be one for them. That'll be important news, significant news, because, of course, after he speaks, the, the thing happens. People, they say they're not interested, they say they don't believe, when it gets down to, oh, suddenly I've got a terrible disease, I'm going to die. Sometimes when it gets down to a tragic injury or a, a terrible life event or a difficult... What do people do? You know, when you're in the foxholes, you, you, uh, the, the soldiers would begin to pray to God, even the more, more uh, unbelieving ones. Because at the end of the day, you're left to your own resources, but the God of heaven is ready to let you join yourself to him. He wants to bring you together with him. He wants, he wants to bring us in. So we look to the God of heaven, and there's something in us, a natural, they say, you know, the God-shaped hole. It sounds kind of, it's kind of sappy, but, but it's just plain true. We are designed as worshiping beings, and so we sort of naturally turn to God. Even though we're distorted and fallen and messed up, we turn to him. And that's, that's the way we're built. So the eyes of, of men are on the Lord. They want to see what God wants. They're curious about that. They don't understand God with clarity, but they understand that he's their creatures and he's the creator. We, for people who are curious about God, that we give a an example to feel, hey, that maybe I can trust this God. God, maybe he is good, like, like people say. People are wondering whether the God of heaven is just for the Hebrews, you know, or whether he's for all men. And that's, that's an important question. He designed us all. I mean, long before there were Hebrews, there were, there were just humans in general. And God's plan is to love all humans. He's, the Bible tells us over and over, he is not a respecter of persons. There's a thing, something we can be part of today something positive. Every single man is your brother. Every single woman is your sister. Uh, every person is one who's made in God's image. And if they will turn their hearts over to him, he will remake them in his moral image. Today, you have a total bankruptcy. We're seeing uh, how deadly humans are when they're just left to themselves. And they, they think they're going to just remake the world in their own image. We are in a, a Christian stance. Our stance is we love all men. We want to to serve and draw all men toward God, serve the King of Heaven. And so everybody's invited. Hey, let's all come to the picnic. Mm -hmm.